Welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if you're new here. Today, I wanted to talk about the concept of enough. And as someone who tends to write better than I can convey the words verbally, I am going to be sharing with you an article that I wrote that was published in July of 2022. That still rings true today uh, when it comes to understanding that so many of us feel that nothing is ever enough. So this topic was important to me as I kept striving in my careers in order to fill this void inside of my heart where I just never felt that being who I was was enough. I have eventually figured out that nothing external to me in terms of achievements was going to fill that void. And then I had to explore inward where it was really stemming from. And what it was stemming from was this fact that I had attached my identity onto performance-based outcomes, lost my way in what society tells us is going to bring us fulfillment and happiness. I was on track to become a military surgeon when I had quite an existential crisis and realized that I had given up my relationships, my time with loved ones, my health, and almost died during residency, and it felt like nothing was ever going to be enough. The healing journey has not been easy, and so I share my lessons with many of you in hopes that you can learn it without suffering as much, and if you are suffering, that you have a community to lean on for support. So for today, if you have felt like nothing you ever do is enough, I'm here to support you, I'm here to process through those feelings together, to really investigate where do they come from and how can we reclaim the narrative? What does enough even mean? And how can we let go of striving, of constantly sacrificing us in order to obtain enoughness? Because the more we strive, the more we focus on these achievements and things outside of ourselves, often the more empty that we feel. I know this from my own journey. I'd love to hear from you, your experience, both where you're at, things that may not have worked and what you're navigating right now. I anticipate if you've clicked on this video, the topic might resonate with you. So welcome. I will share the article link down below uh, that I am sharing with you today. It is on Kevin MD, again, from July 10th, 2022. When is enough enough in your career? We spend so much of our lives chasing a sense of doing enough and being enough. Though I anticipate it's been years in the making, I feel like I woke up one day and I just had enough. This time it wasn't in a hopeless way. It was more of an awakening and permission to stop running on a treadmill to nowhere. At first I felt a wave of grief as I let go of the false illusion of what I thought life needed to be and who I thought I needed to be. And then I transitioned into a period of rebirth as I reclaimed my own life. As I use these words, I think of Martha Beck's interpretation of the change cycle, where stage one or phase one is death and rebirth, which may be referenced in her book, Find Your Own North Star, or via Google, I'll share a link in the description below. I highly recommend Martha Beck's work for anyone who is wayfinding. Martha Beck's Wayfinder program has been instrumental in my healing journey. And I'm currently finishing Martha Beck's Master Coach training two years after this article I wrote. So it still rings true, but I digress. For today, let's dive into enoughness. As I know many relate to the ride, I hope sharing my journey helps you find your peace too. First, the reflection. Throughout life, I've been judged for being too big, too small, too quiet, too loud, a dentist, but not a surgeon, then a surgical resident, but not X-type surgical resident, and oh no, a woman. The list goes on and on. I was in the Air Force and jokingly 
was told I wasn't military enough compared to the other branches. As a dentist, I wasn't doctor enough. And after getting my MD, I still was not enough, as I hadn't yet finished a medical residency. Worse, my brain would offer me. I was transferring out of surgery. I had many internal judgments about myself at this point, none of which remotely sounded like being enough. After transferring from surgery, I specialized in oral medicine. So then I belonged to both dentistry and medicine or neither, studying a lot of both, yet feeling not enough of either. While sorting out where I belonged, I started researching full-time in a role that combines my formal trainings. As a new researcher, I did not yet have enough publications. Then I contribute to more publications, but yet not enough first author publications. Oh, and by the way, which journal? What's the impact factor? Nope, sorry. That's not enough. Ah. At the time of the writing, I had currently de dedicated myself to full-time research, taking a hiatus from the clinic. I was constantly worrying that if I was not in clinic, I wasn't doing enough for patients. But then if I went back to the clinic, it would take away from the time I spent on my research tasks. Then I may not have enough time for those. And I allowed myself to consider the potential. When I thought about adding back a clinical role, I was enthused by the potential to add tremendous value to patients' quality of life. However, as someone who transferred more into a palliative care setting, the encounters would not translate to high RVUs compared to being the surgeon I was going to be or a different type of high-paying specialty. So the politicalized healthcare system and the learned belief that money is a reflection of value provided me the sense that I would not be adding enough value. And when I thought of my value in that context, I wondered, should I do surgery again? And when I contemplate doing surgery again, I often pause as it evokes quite a trauma response which often leads my mind and my body flooded with an intense aversion to the thought of surgery, likely as a form of self-protection, considering that I left surgery because I had very profound and pervasive suicidal ideation during my residency. I also was critically ill. My ex-boyfriend died suddenly. I was discharged for seeking mental health support. And I was lost. I was so alone and lost. And as I sit in a storm of emotions, I acknowledge a key rumination that was deeply associated with my experience of suicidal ideation. It was the belief that I was trapped in this endless cycle of never doing or simply being enough. That thought can lead to tremendous self-destruction if not challenged. So here we are. Here, I pause to challenge my own thought pattern and yours if you are here too with the first and simple question from The Work by Byron Katie. Is it true? Is it true that nothing I ever did was enough? That I 
am not enough. The reality is I had developed this deep internal belief about myself. And then confirmation bias provided me the opportunity to find ways to prove myself correct. Without a sense of inner self-worth and inherent enoughness, I hyperfixated on all of the feedback I received that told me I was too little or too much. These comments often reflect the other person's internal insecurities and values. I believe them deeply because of my own insecurities. Until, bam, I hit the wall. I had enough. I was stunned by the impact. I sat in an existential crisis once again. And this time, instead of running for another accomplishment or diving into overwork in order to temporarily numb the pain of this emptiness, I sat. I observed. I silenced the mind. And then I decided no more spinning. Enough is enough. In that moment, I stepped off the merry-go-round and started learning more skills and how to be still, pause, quiet, and process through all the emptiness. At first, it felt like a hole of darkness. Empty. Lonely. And cold. However, over time, this darkness turned into hope. And that black hole was replaced by this blank, bright white canvas with limitless possibilities. I began to feel grounded as I pinked up the paintbrush while surrounded by a vast array of paint colors, admiring this newfound lightness and excitement. I realized that I get to create the painting before me, a representation of my life a vision board of hope and rebirth. And as I breathe in and I prepare to put color to the canvas, I put my hand to my heart and I remind myself You are safe, you are whole, you are enough. Breathe out, long exhale. Breathe in and repeat. You are safe, you are whole. You are enough. Join me as desired and know that at this very moment, you are enough. You are enough. Now and always. 
you struggle with feelings of not enoughness. I see you. And I'm here to walk with you. To support you in knowing that you are loved, you are valuable, you matter, you are way more than just enough. You are uniquely you. When it comes to enoughness, I never, ever, ever want to see your CV, to know about your work history, in order for you to feel validated that my beliefs and what I know about you are true. The same beliefs I know about myself. We are, and always will be, enough. As for the chase, enough is enough. Enough.